Hello and welcome to this Autodesk Inventor Tips and Tricks tutorial covering iPod creation. What is an iPod? If you're wondering what an iPod is, an iPod is a master part which has derivatives which are essentially the same part but with various different sizes changes. So let's say for example you're a company that manufactures this little doodah thing here. You might do the same part but variation 2 might have a different number of holes, variation 3 might have a different width, Variation 4 might have a different hole diameter and instead of going save as and having to then edit the part, change the features and change the dimensions, save as again, change another one, blah blah blah, you create a master part, you convert it into an iPod and the master part drives the various different variations of that part and you might know it as a factory member, a factory table, you know, a factory part, depending on what package you've come from. Inventor calls them iPods. Right. How do we get going? I'm, well, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible and I'm just going to model up a tube. Let's keep it very simple. A tube with width, length, height and thickness. And we'll change those values in the iPod. So let's just start by sketching a very simple square profile. The first tip I can give you when working with an iPod is to name your parameters. Whatever it is that's going to change in your iPod, give them a name. So as we're sketching, uh, I know this one's going to change, so I'm going to call it width, and I'm going to say that's going to be 50 mil. And this one's going to be the length, and that's going to be 50 mil. This is just the master part, so these are kind of our starting values. So width and length, uh, let's finish that sketch. And then we'll do an extrusion, and we'll say this is going to be uh, height equals uh, whatever, 100 mil. Height equals 100 mil. Okay, it's a bit of tube, so we need to hollow it out. So let's do a shell and let's remove the top and bottom faces so it looks more tubular. And we will call the thickness parameter THK. So the initial thickness will be two mil. All right then, that's pretty much, that's pretty much the part designed. If we go to the parameters, we should see we've now got width, length, height, and thickness. And there's the values. So these are the values that will change in the different variations of our iPod. It's not an iPod yet, obviously. It's just a standard part. First thing we've got to do is save it. So let's just call it, I don't know, generic tube or tube, whichever suits. Okay, how to create an iPod. Once you've saved it, go to the Manage tab on your ribbon bar at the top. Then on the Author tab, you want to select Create iPod, and it gives you this rather spooky, scary, intimidating looking table. It ain't that bad. It isn't that bad. Right, because we've named our parameters, Inventor's kind of put two and two together and it's gone, hang about, you've named your parameters and you've now cr selected create iPod. I'm going to have a stab in the dark that the parameters you give a name to, you're going to want to change them in the iPod. Correct, indeed, bingo. So down below here, right, this area down below, this is really what we're interested in. This is where the action happens. Where we've got row one, this is going to be variation one of the iPod. And by default, Inventor will give the values whatever it's set to in the master part. But you're free to change those. If variation one is going to be different, you can change those. But I'm going to keep variation one the same as the master iPod. Fine. The first two columns, member and part number. When Inventor creates an iPod and variations of an iPod, those variations Inventor will create physical files to represent those variations. So those physical files need a file name. So I'm going to say physical file variation number one is going to be called T1 for tube one, tube variation one. Once you press return, you'll get a message to say it, it's going to alter the file name. I, I know I've just I've just done that. I know it's going to change the file name and the part number. It can be completely different if you want it to be. You can put your own company's part number in here, but I'm just going to say the part number is also going to be T1. Okay, that's pretty much it for variation one. I need to create two more variations though. You can have as many variations as you want really, but I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna create three variations. So to create a new one, you right click on the row and you say insert row. So this is row two. So for the file name of variation two, I'm gonna call this T2, press tab, part number T2. Okay, but I can now change the different dimensions for variation two. So I can say in variation two, the width of the tube is going to be 75 mil. Uh, let's keep the format in the same. For length, I can say it's going to be uh, no, 60 mil. The height is going to be 120 mil. And the thickness will be 
three mil. So that's variation two. For variation three, right click, insert another row, and just rinse and repeat, exactly the same process. File name will be T3, part number will be T3, and for the width, let's say, width is gonna be 100 mil, length is gonna be, I don't know, 40 mil, height, uh, 150 mil, thickness, five mil. So there's our three variations created. If you're happy with that, if that's all you need, then just hit OK. Once that's done, this part is now an I part. To verify that, in your browser, you'll see that you've now got this sort of Excel row and column looking icon here, and you should see table, a node called table underneath the top level browser with T1, T2, and T3. Just to, just to validate that this has worked, you can double click T2, and Inventor should remodel the component and show you what variation T2 looks like. Same for T3. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks about what I set. T2 and T1. Okay, let's just give that a save. All right, at the moment, we've only got the master part. Although we've created three variations, the inventor hasn't yet created the physical files for T1, T2, and T3. So what we can do to create those variations is to select them in the browser, right click, and select generate the files. Once you do that, if we just hit open, in the same folder where the master part is, it'll create a subfolder called the same as the master part, and there's T1, T2, and T3, physical files generated. We're not quite done yet. A couple more tips. If we go back to the iPart table, once you've finished the table, you're not committed to it, you can right click on it and say edit the table at any point in time. What I would highly recommend that you do is to set one of these columns as a key column. And what that means is when you place your iPart into an assembly, when Inventor says, all right then, you're placing your iPod, which variation do you want to place? How do you tell Inventor which variation you want to place? Well, in it, it depends. In my scenario here, I want to tell Inventor which variation to place based on the part number. So I want to say place T2 or place T3. So I'm going to right click on the part number column header, go to key and make that key number one. And click OK. And then save. And then we'll close this down. So what happens next? Okay, well, I'm going to create an assembly, just a blank assembly, and then I'm going to place a component and then select the master iPod. Don't place one of the derivatives. They're just there. They're just there because they need to be there, but don't place those. Always place the master iPod. Double click this. You'll then be presented with the place iPod dialog box. An inventor is saying, okay, well, you selected part number is the key column. Which one would you like to place? Let's place T2. And then left click, and there's T2 placed in your assembly. If that's all you want to do, fine. You can place another one. Select all values, T1, and there's T1. Repeat, T3, and place that there. And there you go. There's your three iPods placed. What next? Well, that's pretty much it, really. That's an iPod created, the derivatives created, and that's how you place it in an assembly. But just as a couple of further enhancements on what our iPods are capable of. If we reopen the master iPod, just say there's a further design change to this iPod. Let's just say, for example, we're going to place a chamfer on the outside, on the outside edges. So let's come into the master iPod, place a chamfer on the outside edges, and... Let's confirm that. I'm not too fussed about the sizes, but we've made a physical change to the file. What happens to the iParts that you've placed in your assemblies? Well, let's save the master. Let's go back to the assembly and Inventor will light up the update button on your quick access toolbar at the top. It knows that something's changed. If we hit update, there you can see it's now placed the chamfer on all the iPart members which is pretty handy. If we go back to the master, let's go back to the master iPod and edit the table again. Let's just say, for example, in one of the variations, we don't want the chamfer to be on the part. What we can do is right click on the chamfer feature and that, well, we don't right click on just select it and then select this button here and that will add the feature into the, uh, it adds the feature into the, the iPod table. Um, First off, we can change the, the sizes. I've kind of done this the wrong way around, but if you select the feature, it adds the sizes in. So it knows it's a two mil chamfer. So we can change the size of the chamfer per variation. To actually turn it on and off, what we've got to do is go to the suppression tab, select the chamfer, add that in. And then it says, okay, well in variation one, two, and three, it's actually going to compute that chamfer. But let's just say in variation three, we want to turn it off. What you have to do is type in suppress. 
In variation 3, the chamfer will be suppressed. Let's click OK. Let's save this. And let's go back to the assembly. Hit update. And what you'll see is that in variation 3, the chamfer is suppressed. But in variation 1 and 2, the chamfer is computed. So, yeah, that's, again, I've got, gone a little bit beyond the basics there. But just to show what iParts can do, you can do that. And just to give you a, a taste of what you can do if you do spend a little bit more time on it, go back to edit table. You can change things like... Uh, properties. You can change the, the physical material. You can have a different material assigned to each variation of the iPod. You can change descriptions and, uh, and any i property really across the variations just by adding those in and then changing the values in the table below. Okay, with respect to drawings, there's something really quite clever you can do with iPods uh, on drawings. It's something which a lot of people kind of manually create at the moment, but you can do it automatically. If you create a view, of your iPod, so don't create a view of the derivatives, create a view of the master, and let's just uh, let's place an isometric view in there. You can pick and choose which member it will show in the view. It doesn't really make a difference, really. It's still a view of the iPod, but you can pick T1, T2, or T3, or the active member, whichever one that may be. But let's just pick T1. Place a view of this. Okay. What about the... It's an iPod. It, it doesn't have a single dimension, does it? It doesn't have a single length. It has three different lengths. So what people tend to do is create a table showing the different lengths that are possible for this part. Do you really want to manually create that table? No, of course you don't. No, but can do this automatically. If you go to the annotate tab and then go to the general table option, select that view, it detects that it's an I part. Select column chooser, and then let's just, let's get rid of member and let's add height, length, thickness, and width, and then hit OK. What you'll then be able to do is place a table showing all the various different variations, the sizes, the names of the parameters, and the part number. Now you're free to edit this table. You're free to change the column headers. You're free to change the appearance of that table. And then you're also free to place the dimensions to say, OK, well, this one here is length, and this one here is uh, you know, thickness and, and width and height. OK. All right then, I think that's probably about enough for iPods. That should hopefully be enough to get you guys started if you are trying to get yourselves into iPods, understand how they work and apply it to a part that you guys design and manufacture. If you found that video useful, I really hope you did. Please press like on the video. Uh, if you didn't, if there was something missing that you don't quite understand, please put some comments down below and uh, hopefully I'll get, be able to get back to you and put, put some explanations in there if possible. Uh, but thank you very much for checking this video out. Please do subscribe to the channel for future video uh, announcements and updates and until next time see ya